Hey everyone, it's Gabby from MyJoy, and I'm excited to learn to code with you. In this project track, we're going to be mastering the basics of Python code by coding art. Why art? Well, it's a really great way to learn to code. It's fun. You get to express yourself and be creative. And it's a great way to think with a computer. So if you're a beginner, then this is the perfect track for you. Let's jump into our project and meet our robotic friend. The turtle. Before we get coding, I'd like to show you how to set up your workspace. So I've gone ahead and I've just uh, opened my tutorial and I've opened uh, a main PY. This is where we will be coding. And then I've made sure to have an output window and my console window. So I just want to show you how to get that output window in case you're unfamiliar. Um, what it might look like is that you have two tabs and then I like to go and just drag this window over here so that it creates two separate outputs. Time to get coding. A couple of things to notice. MyJoy tutorials are laid out in a really interesting way. And this is to sort of make coding a little bit more fun and documentation a little less heavy to read, especially if you're just starting out. So we've got a introduction section which will introduce you to the project mission and the concepts we're exploring in the project. Then there will be a series of challenges, a did you know section with some trivia around the project, and then a reflection section with a link to a quiz that you can run in the console and check your understanding afterwards. So let's head on back to our Let's Code Computer Generated Art We've covered our mission for this project. And we're gonna start by borrowing this code snippet, copy and paste it. And just before we run or compile our code, we're just going to take a look at what the code says and we're going to predict what the code snippet does. So the first line says from turtle import, so this imports the turtle module. The, on the third line, there is what we call a comment. It's got a, this hashtag, um, in front of it, so it is a line that the computer does not um, action and it sets up our screen to fill up here and that makes it just a little bit easier working with the output otherwise it doesn't, we constantly have to resize our window. And then on line six we have another comment which says our first command and our first command is shape arrow. Hmm. Can you puzzle out what that might do? Why don't you go hit the run button and see if you predicted correctly. An arrow, excellent. We have a command that has told the computer we want to see an arrow and it has given us an arrow. So a couple of pro tips before we move on to our coding challenge. We always code in the main PY. Then if you want to see your code compile or run, you hit the green run button and remember to only write one command per line. Challenge one. I'm going to start off this challenge by leaving a comment in line nine, almost as if I have a header to organize my work. And then I am going to jump into my tutorial. A command consists of three things. The, a command name, so in this instance, in the command we've just learned, the command name would be shape. It is then followed by brackets. We have two brackets or parentheses, and I literally sometimes go like this to help me remember that there are brackets next. And then inside the brackets, which would be my head inside, would be a value that determines uh, the behavior of the command. So an example of something like that in would be arrow, which determined that the behavior of the shape command would be an arrow, but we could change that to being a square or possibly a circle or even maybe a turtle. Why don't we go and try and change it to a turtle and see what happens. Turtle. I'm going to hit run. Remember, if I want to see the output of my code, I have to hit that run button. Brilliant. It's turned into a turtle. So for challenge one, we're going to go ahead and copy 
some basic commands and just explore and experiment and get a little bit familiar with the workspace and this idea of programming and thinking with the computer. So you can practice copying and pasting. You can also practice just typing out your commands. There's really no right or wrong way. It's just work as you see fit and whatever you feel comfortable doing. I'm gonna just write out all of these commands as I'm also practicing my typing skills. And I'm gonna hit run. It went forward, backward, left and right. Hmm, I wonder what will happen if I change the values. So you might wanna go and change the values in your shape command. So I could maybe try a circle just out of interest. And then I'm gonna change these values to different values. I don't really know what to expect, but I think this is going to, I'm predicting this is going to change the length of the line. I think this value is going to change the angle at which the turtle is turning. And as I said previously, I think that's going to change the shape. Let's hit run and see if we predicted correctly. Whoa, that's so cool. You can also change the order. You can see what that does. And really, this is an invitation to play and explore. Go ahead and pause and play with the commands. Really, just get as creative as you like. One thing to note before we move on, in some commands, we use inverted commas, and in others, we don't. And this is simply because of the different type of data we're working with. Our string or text values go in inverted commas. You can use double or single quotes. I like to remember that when I'm using words, I am talking to the computer. And then with your numeric values, so numbers, you don't use your quotation marks. Let's move on to challenge two. As I've mentioned before, coders are constantly borrowing code snippets from other coders. So here's a code snippet from a coder named Seymour. Why? I'm just going to add hashtags, comments, and, un and comment my code. So what's nice about that is using comments allow me to keep my work, but it means that I don't have to run um, sections of code repeatedly as I move through the challenges. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this code snippet and I'm going to just paste it in under challenge two. And then I'm going to predict what this code snippet will do. I'm looking at some clues such as the comments. I'm noticing pen color, light green, letter E. I'm noticing pen size. I see forward and backwards, left and right commands. Those I know. There seems like a lot of movement. Maybe writing? All right, I can't wait to find out. I'm gonna hit the code, the run button. And I guessed it, it is writing. It writes the word epic. That's pretty cool. Remember, you can always remix other coders code. So you could do something really fun. Like, um, what will I do? I think I'm gonna try and change all the colors to blue. You can go ahead and try anything you'd like. Really, it's an invitation to play and explore. I think it's working. Awesome, I modified the code so that my epic output is all in light blue and you can play with that however you'd like. Time to, for challenge three. So I'm not gonna uncomment all of this code. I'm just gonna show you, I'm just gonna delete this and I'm gonna move on to challenge three. And then I'm gonna borrow this code snippet, paste it in and have a quick squiz at what this could possibly be. Outline, square, full square. Get into the position for the first eye, draw the first eye. That looks like some complicated code. This is a lot of code. Soon we're gonna be able to write this many lines of code without a sweat. Ooh, I think I know this is a face. All right, let's see if I'm right. That's so cute. It's a creeper for those Minecraft fans out there. Now, feel free to edit this as you like and play around with it. 
see if you can maybe make it a blue creeper or red creeper or orange creeper. You might want to change um, the size of the creeper. But really you can explore. I'm going to make it a red angry creeper. And then I'm going to declare success. Yeah, I did it. Give yourself a high five. Awesome. Time for Did You Know? So our Did You Know section is a fun little additional section with some code trivia about the programming language, some coding concepts, or the project. And this is really to build your knowledge as a coder and foster your curiosity. Let's dive into some trivia. Did you know that the original Turtle Graphics module was called Logo and developed in 1967 by three computer scientists Wally Furzik, Seymour Papert, and Cynthia Solomons. Did you know that Python is a super popular programming language because it's really versatile and super powerful? You can build things from games to web apps to even programming artificial intelligence. Let's head over to the reflection section. That rhymes. <laughs> so our reflection section is a moment to pause and consolidate everything we've just learned in this project. Now, the way to do that is to copy this code snippet, head over to your main PY, just hit enter and create a space, and then you can paste the from quiz import on line one, and then just hit run. And what you will notice is that a quiz will load up in your console. It's quiz time. So we have question one. What is the correct syntax for a color command? A color red, B, color red, C, color red, brackets, inverted commas. Write the letter of the sentence you think is correct. So if you want to interface with the quiz, you'll respond in the console. Just click, hit your answer. In this instance, I'm guessing it is C and I'll hit enter. And I'll get some feedback instantly. It says, yes, that is correct. The command will change the color to red. And then there is another question, but I'm gonna leave the rest of the questions for you to fill in and check your understanding. That's project zero, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Well done on completing your first Python Turtle Graphics project with MindJoy. We hope you've had a ton of fun and we're looking forward to the next one.